No, this is not another complaint video. Actually, what we want to do here is share some data we've collected. Uh, data we've collected ourselves from our track and street driving and information I've gathered from talking to tuners and performance shops who actually race their cars and as it relates to heat, oil pressure, and oil temperature. So this is going to help the guys who are running on the track with forced induction and even the guys that are running on the track with naturally aspirated motors and it's going to apply down to people who want to you know aggressively street drive or drag race as well. If you have an 86 platform and it's you have forced induction and you're going on the track with this thing there's a few things you need and I'm just gonna say it, you need an oil cooler I don't care which one but you need one. Second thing is if you don't have a way to monitor oil temperature you should figure that out but most importantly anybody that sets foot on the track with this car with forced induction that's doing extended lapping should have an oil pressure gauge and I'm gonna go into why. Now with all that said, let's take a look at the uh, oil pressures on a cold start. All right, I'm just gonna give you a quick demo here of how much the actual oil pressure fluctuates on throttle. The car's been in idle for about 10 minutes and the direct injection mode is switched, which usually happens about the 10 minute mark. And you can hear the chirping from the high pressure fuel pump at that point. Um, but, you know, this is why cold starts are really tough on cars. Uh, the oil's cold, it's really thick, and the thicker the oil that you use, the higher your oil pressure on these cold starts, and typically that's, again, where all your wear happens. So, typically at 2,000 RPMs, you'd see about 30 to 40 PSI once the car was warmed up, but as you can see here, you know, around 1,500, we're at 90 PSI, uh, you know, three, four times that amount. Okay, so we've already established the fact that if you track this car stock or with forced induction, you need an oil cooler on the car. There's no way around it. Um, so if you have an oil cooler on this car and you're in a cold climate and you decide to get an oil cooler with a thermostatic plate, which means where that oil filter is, that plate has a thermostat that opens at a certain temperature. What's not widely known is that plate always has a trickle flow to the oil cooler, regardless of temperature. And this is to prevent airlock, and that's straight from MoCal. So in the winter, regardless of that thermostat, there's always going to be oil going to the cooler, which means that it's going to take a lot longer for that oil to heat up. And then as soon as you back off the throttle, that oil temperature is going to start to come down because that cooler is still cooling the oil. So in the winter time, We'll just assume if you're driving in the winter and you're not tracking your car with forced induction, superchargers, and naturally aspirated, you want to run a 0W20. Uh, it, it's going to give you the, the least amount of wear. It's going to heat up the fastest from when it's cold, and uh, it's going to maintain that oil pressure that you want. It's, See, oil pressures are really good right now because that oil is still in that good range for the 10W30. <laughs> You're getting 70 to 80 PSI at 7,000 RPMs. Now, that's not going to last once you really heat up the oil. Uh, progressively, as that oil gets into the 200s, 210s, 220s, you're going to see that 70 PSI start to drop to 60, 50. And then once you're in that 40 range, it's time to back off. <clears throat> now the thing is, is if you have an oil cooler, uh, driving on the street, you're never going to get the oil temperature up like you would on a track. So your oil temperatures and oil pressures are going to really stay stable. Um, and that's why there's not really a need on the street for a very heavy or thick oil, uh, unless you're running a turbo. So, you know, as we look right now, we're back to idle. And now that the car is warm on 10W30, this oil pressure is about at 17 PSI.
and that means the oil temperature is right around 185, 190 degrees. So now we're just gonna let the RPMs hang at about 45, 4,500 RPMs, and this will help us heat up the oil a little bit here uh, to be able to get that temperature up to see how much, what kind of drops we get. As you can see, we've heated up the oil and you can see now we're down to 14, 15 PSI, which means we're probably over 200 degrees Fahrenheit of oil temp. So as we goose it now, you can see we're already in the 60s, which is still fine. But the point being is, the more you heat up the oil, you're gonna see that oil pressure continue to drop at the red line. You can see we're down at 13 PSI now, which means we're over 200 degrees oil temperature. And we're still in the 60s in terms of PSI at the red line, which is good. Truth be told, this all boils down to different types of motor oils, uh, and I've gone through several. But one thing I can tell you is pick a brand. I don't really care what brand you choose, but make sure if you're going to be changing oil grades for, let's say, street oil, track oil, and winter oil, that it's all the same brand. Because generally their formulation and additive packages are the same or similar throughout like let's say for Redline 0W20, their additive package is similar to their 10W30. All right, so I'm not gonna give you a step-by-step -step install of installing an oil pressure gauge, but I'm gonna give you the gist of how you would do it on this car. If we take a look at the engine block here, right in between the throttle body and the AC compressor, you can see this cable loom here is the actual oil, oil temperature sender, oil pressure sender rather. That's plugged into a plug that goes directly into the block. What would be there normally is this plug. This is an oil gallery plug that goes directly into the block. So this is the the plug that you'd be removing and then that brass part at the bottom here, the brass plug replaces that and then the oil sender screws into that and this is NBT threaded. So if you get a kit with the right size for the Subaru block, it just basically is plug and play. Screw in the brass plug, screw in the sender, and then you run your wiring, which I've coated with this fire resistant uh, loom, much like how the fuel lines are. I've covered it, run it all the way to the firewall, and then there's a plug that runs directly in here The th next thing you're going to need are these low profile fuse taps. Now this is what you're going to be using to run the actual power wires to your fuse box. So basically these just tap into like your radio which is you know switched and then you can run one to your tail lights which is you know uh, dimmable and then uh, you just need a constant 12 volt connection. So you can see here um, that's actually the footwell. These are the pedals. Under there you can see where that main wiring harness runs in and where the actual extra line I've run for the oil temperature sender or oil pressure sender. And it just goes straight up here. You run it in the fuse taps to the fuse box. You know, do it neatly. So essentially you just take off the panel here and drop this panel down, which is just a couple screws and then you can run your wiring, which you can see here, behind this to your gauge. And it's really as simple as that, even though it took me hours to do because I had never done it before. But uh, this is uh, a gauge holder 
uh, by Craven Speed, small company. They do license plate brackets and stuff, but this one actually fits behind your, your steering wheel, as you can see, as a plate, and it holds two gauges, uh, and it's very clean. It looks kind of OEM, so you can tell it's not really very messy. Now you're gonna say, you know what, I don't like you. I don't trust you, and that's fine. But what does the service manual say? Well, the service manual says you should have an additional 10 PSI of oil pressure for every 1,000 RPM. So if you're running at 2,000 RPMs, you should have 30 PSI of oil pressure. If you're running at 5,000 RPMs, you should have 60 PSI of oil pressure. Now, the catch with that is, is when you're in cold operating temperatures and that oil is cold, your oil pressures are going to be high. And the thicker the oil you run, the higher those pressures are going to be. So the same can be said when you hit high oil temperature. When that oil thins out, your pressures start to drop. So you're, you're threading this fine line between where you want to be. And it just depends on the conditions you're in. If you're just in normal conditions and not tracking, you don't have to worry about any of this shit. You just run a 0W20 and be done. So we haven't even talked about turbo kits. And those are a whole different animal. And there's plenty of them, plenty of different types. But for the most part, if you're getting your normal, typical turbocharger kit, with an off-the-shelf oil cooler, um, you're gonna wanna be very careful about what oil you use when you go to the track. At a minimum, and this is from talking to the race guys, you don't wanna be running any less than a ton W40 weight oil. If you're going extended sessions in hot climates, you wanna run a 15W50. It's gonna give you your best chance at keeping oil pressures up when those oil temperatures go up. And if you're really hardcore, you probably just wanna consider running a straight 40 or 50 weight oil just to be safe. 0W20, it's what the car is spec for. Perfectly efficient. And if you're naturally aspirated and you're on the street and doing autocross, you can run 0W20 all day long, perfectly fine. Now, where the limits are with 0W20 is about the 225 to 235 degree oil temperature range. So 10W30 is a pretty good balance, right? But if you're on the track more and you're in a warmer climate and you're pushing this car and you're really going more flat out on a track, 1030 is going to thin out very quickly. Uh, so you're going to want to go to a 1040. And a 1040 is pretty much the best that you're going to be able to do on a supercharger or a naturally aspirated car that you're going to get a good balance between street and track driving. It allows you to maintain a good oil pressure up to about 265 degrees Fahrenheit. At 265, you're going to start seeing those low 40 PSI ranges at 7,000 RPMs. So in conclusion, you want to stay out of the 40 PSI range, if at all possible, at 7,000 RPMs. You don't want to keep pushing the car. You're just risking skimming bearings, especially the more mileage you have on the motor. So that's the takeaway. The other takeaway is, Obviously, you're going to have tuning done on this car if you have any type of forced induction or even if you're naturally aspirated. After talking with the tuners and knowing enough about it, most of these tunes are designed on a dyno. They're designed for street driving to give you that extra boost that you want, but a lot of them aren't pushed to the limits that track driving is. So if you plan on hardcore track driving this car, you're going to want to talk to your tuner specifically about building you a more uh, conservative tune. Uh, very conservative compared to where they're pushing it for the street.